Hey guys, welcome back to Common Sense Garage, where we've been making you look smarter since 2020. Again, 5 sixteenths clamp. There's one sensor attached to the hose right here. It's got a red locking tab on it. Is for each one of these sensors that I take off, I'm gonna label them with a piece of tape and a marker. And so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap the piece of tape around it and create like a little flag off to the side. And the reason I do that is because when I get all this stuff pulled apart, a lot of times I'm not coming right back to it a day later, two days later, a week later, and uh, it ends up really causing problems because I can't remember like I used to. And uh, I wanna make sure that all these sensors get back in place. So what I'll do is I'll just number it um, starting with this sensor because this is the first one that I pulled off. This will be the number one sensor. And I'll take another piece of tape and put on the hose. With the sensor, I'll create another flag. Because like I said, you guys can see it here. I'll create another flag off of that sensor where it plugged up at. And I'll also mark a number one on it as well. And all that does is that lets me know or it lets anybody else know in case I'm not the one that comes back to do this car. I hope that I am, but in case I'm not, um, it lets the other person know, hey, this sensor goes with this plug. So there's a few more sensors that we're gonna take a look at that we're gonna try and disconnect. There's one up here on the plenum itself, one for the, I believe it's the cruise control module. I'm not 100% sure. I can probably look in the manual and tell you, but um, Similar, similar things, they both have red clips on them and then they have push buttons behind them to release the, the, release the plug off of the sensor. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that now and uh, we'll, we'll see you then.
there are two um, supports, I guess you could call it. Okay, so there's one right here, and it's supposed to have a nut on it. This one didn't, so apparently somebody has already been in this thing before. Uh, and there's also one right here at the front of the engine. So those two have to be removed, and the, uh, the brackets pulled out of the way. So right here is the bolt holding that support bracket to the, um, the head itself, to the block. Well, to the block, I'm sorry. Holding it to the block. And there's another one uh, right down here that holds this one. So uh, make sure you take those two off before you start to pull the intake off. All the bolts are loose for the intake plenum. I still need to get this bracket moved up out of the way. 15 millimeter wrench takes off these brackets. All you want to do is just loosen them up to where you can get them out of your way. I'll show you once I get this thing pulled completely off. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start pulling the connectors off these coil packs, label them the same way. bit screw I'll let you know what size that is um, it appears that there's two of them one on each side catty corner from each other and then this whole piece will just pull up so the Torx bit size is a T25 said you want to make sure that you number them so that you know which cylinder they actually come out of and uh, so this one came out of the front cylinder driver side right behind the oil cap here and uh, we're going we're gonna to lay it off to the side and lay them in order so that I know how they go back. The remainder part of the procedure is the same for the remaining five coil packs so uh, I want to make sure that I go ahead and do that now. All I do is I, I turn it just a few times, break the bolt loose, screw loose, and I come across from it and break it loose. And you'll see it start to lift up out of the valve cover. Just alter, alternating back and forth between each each screw, and that that just ensures that I don't break anything, and that it comes up relatively even.
Bloomberg sucks.